Hey gorgeous soul, this is it baby. This is a month of turning point. This is a month of transition. Our lives will never be the same again as finally Pluto leaves Capricorn once and for all, well, for a good 200 years, and we are free of a cycle that we have been in since 2008. Liberation and transformation is on its way. Here's your monthly astrology. Sagittarius. Ooh, it's an exciting time for you. There's magic in the air. Let's start at the beginning with the new moon in Scorpio. You are super psychic. You're very intuitive with this new moon and you should use it to your advantage to really trust your instincts, particularly when it comes to your home and family. If you're picking up a vibe, trust in that vibe. Um, you're making changes and you're doing it from your intuition. Don't listen to logic. Don't be rash. Really try and be still and look at what synchronicities and possibilities are coming your way. Mercury, the planet of communication, is entering your sign on the second. So, you, you know, your foot is on the pedal from the beginning of this month. You are ready to go forward. You've got things to say. There will be intense conversations. Do remember you are the wild pony and the truth monster. You can't help it. <laughs> you, you just say what's on your mind, but it can sometimes come across as blunt. When Mercury's in your sign, excellent for being charming and persuasive, but also you could put your foot in it. So, you know, try and think before you speak. <laughs> Good luck with that. But your words are spells, your words are magic, and you have great potential. Now, Pluto, the Lord of Transformation, we are at the final battle. We are at the crescendo. There will be a reward and then there will be a huge shift. But for you, it's been full on because Pluto, for you, has been in your position of security and abundance. No doubt these things have changed. I've been saying Pluto cycle was great for me, actually. Well, I mean, obviously, I had the usual oh, transformations and hell and having to release things and facing all the things that Pluto makes you face. But ultimately... I really transformed in a positive way and you hopefully really look at where you started out in 2008 when it came to abundance and security and where you are now and how do you want to end this era? What can you do to put your stamp on security and abundance? Look at your belief systems within that as well and really truly believe that abundance and securities are yours now, baby. You've earned them in that cycle. And it's super important. You know, the next phase that you're going through is all about communication. The way you communicate is going to radically shift over the coming years. So, you know, it's a very big difference. And also the way, the way you listen to other people and also the way you interpret what other people say to you is going to be a fascinating journey. Now, Mars enters Leo on the 4th, and this kind of gives you a boost. You feel excited. You feel able to be bouncy. You feel naturally energetic. You feel adventurous. You feel all the things that you naturally are. And it, it sort of puts fire and passion into your soul and spirit. On the 11th, Venus, the planet of love and abundance, I think is coming in to give us a final gift because obviously Pluto is leaving once and for all. And Venus is the planet of love and abundance in your position of love and abundance. So I am hoping you will get the prize for all your hard work through this uh, 15 years of, of issues to do with abundance. But hopefully a lot of gains in there. Let me know your gains. Let me know the triumphs in that too down below. Uh, Mercury is square Saturn. You may be in some push me, pull me between your what you want to do, and do at the moment and what your family or your living circumstances are. There will be a message about that. And with Saturn going direct, you can sort of move forward with that after the 15th. Now, on the 15th, we have a full moon in Taurus and it, Uranus is there. Something unexpected is coming up that is urging you to shift a tiny thing for a big reward. It may be something to do with a habit, a pattern. It may be something you need to shift in connection to your health and well-being. But look out for a surprise and take advantage of it on that full moon. 
Mercury in your sign is opposing Jupiter. You know what? That's a good thing. Um, Jupiter always brings something to the party, as I'm always saying. So there could be some joyful news from somebody you're very close to. Pluto leaves on the 19th. Hurrah. And then two days later, the sun goes into your sign. Yeah, baby. It's like, you know, when the sun's in our sign, we're plugged into the mains. We're optimistic. We have this mm, feeling of warmth. You're naturally optimistic anyway. So amazing. You're going to feel great when the sun goes into your sign. Mercury's already there. Bring it on. I do have to say, Mercury does go retrograde on the 26th. So you're like, mm. people from the past popping up, conversations about the past. Maybe you're examining, who was I in the past and who am I now? Um, and what have I got to say? Because Pluto's already starting to make you think about such things. But you have got wonderful potential and possibility. On the 27th, we have the sun in your sign, trying Mars. So you've got the energy, you've got the optimism, you've got the magic in your soul to make this a great month. Let me know what happens. Take care, gorgeous, and I'll speak to you soon. Thank you so much for the love you've given me regarding the Nightweight Tarot. If you haven't got it yet, it contains all of my love and passion that I've had for tarot since I was a small child. And the book gives you an easy way to not only work with tarot easily and quickly, but also to manifest. You can get it from the dreaded Amazon or all good bookstores. So thank you once again.